it is growing ever close to a new century, and with it comes reform and radicals alike. The liberal government in Berlin, headed up by Kaiser Oskar von Hohenzollern, prepares to undertake a shocking action, born from the monarch's own mind. The Austrian Empire has collapsed utterly after the end of the Great War, and with it goes our greatest ally. Although Germany has taken on much of its power and economic strength, it is in need of more by which to assure its safety. In negotiations with the new president of Austria, the Kaiser managed to secure the empire's old colonial territories and claims, including the right to Japan which they never used. In the offices of the Kaiser, the general staff diplomats and colonial exports pour over maps and information about the land of the rising sun, preparing a conflict which if successful would see Germany take the crown of Asia for itself. Despite such an ambitious plan, many warn of collapse and economic ruin for such an action as well as international condemnation. Yet the Kaiser is certain of the course and will continue down it despite all naysayers. On the horizon, there is a great threat that is not to be ignored, as the threat of the Ottoman Empire's constant expansion and annexations of all its neighbors loom. This is the seventh episode of our roleplay multiplayer game of Victoria 3 as Germany. Kaiser Oscar von Hohenzollern, what can I do for you? Um, hello, I'm the governor of the Dutch East Indies, and I want to notify the German Empire that uh, the British are taking influence in the Korean region. With the weakening of uh, Austrian naval power, Japanese uh, positions are also in danger of falling under British influence. We had a long-standing deal with the Austrians to allow them influence on the Tokugawa shogunate, but given the current state of affairs and the selling of colonial claims and territories by the Austria to the German state, legally, I suppose, and technically, the Tokugawa uh, shogunate would by right be a claim of Germany at this. I think a meeting with relevant parties as swiftly as possible is relevant. Um, we'd like to propose Amsterdam if you're not opposed to it. There's several powers I think we should speak to here. Hello. Oh, yeah, why is happening? Oh my god. Oh. There's a lot of uh, very dramatic things happening very quickly, it seems here, especially in Asia, and we need to have a very quick talk here. Yes, we were discussing that as uh, before you enter the room, in fact. What has uh, been discussed so far? The various uh, stances of the nations uh, so far is that the British uh, are currently liberating Cuba, or not Cuba, that's not what they did. Uh, Korea, <laughs> I mean. The Dutch position would be that if uh, the Dutch are to be pushed out of Formosa, then I do believe that our current stance should probably be upheld. Uh, in the name of international law. If a country like Belgium is is to take Formosa after everything that's occurred, we, we see no reason that, that we shouldn't demand that territory transferred to the Dutch government. Yes, the matter of Korea. We would like to inform the governments uh, present here at this time that in a recent deal with Austria, uh, the Republic of Austria and the, the successor to the Austrian Empire sold all of their colonies and colonial claims to the German Empire. And as such, we will be enforcing the former Austrian claim of dominionship and market access to Japan. We certainly support this, if, uh, considering it was a completely legal sale. And it was Absolutely. already discussed that um, uh, Austria was in, uh, Japan was in Austrian spheres. Uh, I got a hundred, I'm at 130 infamy, Jesus fuck. That's why I was joking about that. Because... Oh my god, that's I forgot cut, about that. That's the cut down to size right Where there. Where is the German ambassador? <laughs> Yeah, you are our first pariah, Amarabe. Yeah. Congratulations. Dear Kaiser, oh we, we demand you pull off from your actions in Japan. Yes, so the no, recognizes the independence oh, no. of Japan. Uh, uh, we, we, yeah. we, re we reject your request. Sorry the, to the Germans. Uh, the Brits yeah. are just announced that they buy all colonial claims on Japan from the Austro-Hungarians. That is incorrect. We had a sale of claims uh, from, uh, we had a sale of colonies by Austria. Well, congratulations, Germany. You have now uh, played yourself. <laughs> Call me Anaconda, because I'm going to fucking eat this bitch. Listen, we eat a lot of bratwurst. If we can handle that, we can handle Japan. That's all I'm saying. Our I digestive say, tracts are built different. Up. Jesus, fuck. I wasn't ready for that infamy hit. I, I didn't think we were going to get that. We need in the war, that'll lower our money. I'm just mass building governmental administrations to get up our bureaucracy so we can actually tax our fucking people. The military's not gonna fight well. We gotta end this. A couple more naval invasions, we should be able to get the Japanese to peace out. We're gonna completely uh, shut down our colonial affairs. 
We're gonna go to tier one, and we're gonna cut uh, education and healthcare by one level each. That'll free up a ton of bureaucracy, which will offset our tax loss. Just massive cuts in the government right now. <laughs> That's what that is. We are pushing the Japanese too. I mean, we're we are demolishing them. Out of RP also, what I did want to do with Japan is like this is. Like, the infamy makes it look like we're just about to eat this country whole. What I wanted to do with Japan, RP-wise, is since we bought the claims of the colonies of Austria and, and their lands, what I wanted to do was roleplay out basically us seizing and directly taking control of Japan for a period. But really what we'll do is just take, uh, like, firm rule there. We'll basically gonna modernize them, and then we're gonna release them. We're just gonna basically have them be kept in our market. This was supposed to be more like a an extremely heavy-handed, like, kind of condescending German protectorate that turns into like a us basically having massive influence over them because like with Germany what I wanted to roleplay at colonially is them roleplaying like a more liberal form of colonialism where it's not direct control like the British but I also had no plans for us to speed rush multiculturalism so there'd be still obviously undertones of I mean Germans would not view them as equals in any of our colonies right I mean they just wouldn't we're actually might be good here our interest accounts for all of our deficit at this point. We need to get into a surplus. All right, here we go. Another naval invasion. We're sinking the, the little fleet that they do still have. And then we're going to land up in the north. We are landing. We've lost four, only 4,000 soldiers, by the way. They've lost 13,000 in this war. They're just so decentralized. Like, look, look at Japan's, like, laws. They're still agrarian. They're isolationist. They have a professional military. It's not very big. They literally only had the economy to sustain, like, they had 20 battalions when we invaded. Like, this is a Japan that never had the Meiji, uh, Meiji Restoration, right? I mean, this is a backwater-ass fucking Japan. We're stable-ish for the moment. Our wings are burnt, but we continue to fly close to the sun. Yeah, okay, so we're going to have to modernize uh, the Tokugawa Shogunate. We'll work on that going forward. What has happened RP-wise, essentially, is when the Liberal Party came to power in Germany, they wanted to institute a number of reforms. RP-wise, what I wanted to basically suggest, and I plan to write it that in my RP post for next week, is that essentially they got a lot of that power due to the Kaiser, Oscar von Hohenzollern. He is a reformer, a liberal man. He's also a militarist, and he's also pro-colonial. So he's a very contradictory individual. Good representation of 19th century liberals, really. So in my eyes, and what I plan to say was that basically the liberal coalition got power due to the Kaiser, because he supported them, he pushed them, under the assumption that they had similar views, similar goals, and that he would get more power, right? Because he's an ambitious, power-hungry man. He wants to be at the head of things. you got to remember that the monarchy in Germany and Prussia lost a lot of power at the start of the game due to how it kind of RP'd out, like, the, the reforms in Prussia at the time. So he's kind of looking to get a colonial empire for Germany and get power back into the monarchy. So for him, the invasion and subjugation of Japan after the purchasing of rights from Austria, it was a chance to legitimize his power because if they succeeded and they managed to get a country like Japan into the sphere uh, economically and brought all that wealth in, it would really make him popular and legitimize him. In addition to that, obviously, so it was really a very dangerous play by the Kaiser. Borderline, not treasonous, but uh, disastrous, right? What happened is after the invasion of Japan happened, uh, across the world, there was a lot of anger, uh, and so obviously it was understood that this was legitimate due to the Austrian situation. But what happened was that there was a run on the banks in Germany. As many trading partners stopped working with Germany, uh, the currency uh, started to, you know, decline. A lot of the securities and uh, stocks for, you know, German companies went into freefall. Uh, the gold standard of the bank which had been a legitimizing influence up till then, just couldn't handle the economic freefall that happened. And our economy basically collapsed uh, overnight after the beginning of the war. What happens is the Kaiser took more power during this era. Uh, we haven't modified the constitution, but he's now the full leader of the Liberal Party uh, and has the majority of power in the country with Bismarck having gone on trial. So going forward, given we were on the close of like, I mean, the conservatives and part of the Liberal Party was calling for the Kaiser to, to be at least ousted from any power. And there were obviously beginning to be calls for the absolution of the monarchy entirely. I would have gone Weimar Republic if we had failed this. I mean, we effectively brought Japan into our economy, our, our market, and our economy has gone, it's bounced back. We need to build up more ports. Let's hope we have people. We do, we can max out Mecklenburg and we'll max out Suda as well. 
We'll go back up to top tier on education as soon as we get another surplus. We're completely getting a little bit of colonial affairs, which makes sense. There's nowhere left to colonize. We have our colonies. We are the third biggest producer. Oh man, the Ottomans produce so much fucking steel. We need to catch up on that. As a forward payment, we can take on your depths of 4.4 million. Sounds good to us. That really is uh, 36 million or 35.5, I guess. Uh, we have some troubling uh, things to speak about today. I, uh, I believe you are informed about the tearing situation in China. The civil war there. Yeah, a tragic affair. Yes. Many parties, not us, I hope, uh, believe that this has been the cause of the Siam recent invasion. There is no evidence but, to suggest that's the case. Well, they were the last one to attack China, and now China has exploded. If you want to point a finger at Siam after an already unstable Qing has started a civil war, I mean, it's, I mean, any any country can do it, but we'd like to see them do it to our face, to be frank. Yes. Uh, but on that subject, uh, we believe it may come time soon to reorganize the situation in China. Well, um, as I said, uh, the Ottoman Empire has called for a Council of Europe concerning the Qing Empire given their uh, current and recent civil war. The issue of the declining empire of uh, Qing has been of concern to many European nations for some time, as fears of such an event such as this was uh, inevitably going to be uh, not unfounded. The treaty ports and the trade that we benefited from the Qing have dried up as their civil war continues to rack them and cause more issues for all of our nations. We believe that it is time that we open the discussion to a uh, full partition of the Qing Empire between our uh, requisite nations. No, we, uh, we believe this is the right way to go forward. The situation we all had with China was wonderful for the world's economy and provided for a very fast recovery to the Great War. But it is, believes us that the time of that is ending now. I mean, we have to consider the legitimacy effects here, as well as the economic problems that might arise. Uh, primarily, which would come in the form of if there was direct rule in China of certain areas, uh, it would give many nations, including European powers, not access to many of the resources they cheap produce, uh, produce cheaply. I mean, there are some uh, economies in Europe that would not be hit by this, but for such economies as the United Kingdom, Germany, and others who do, uh, of course, work primarily as trade powers, this would bring many problems. Well, the French delegation would like to speak that it is true, the uh, trading uh, power of the Qing is uh, very wealthy and rich, but uh, if the instability does occur again, the flow of goods will be disrupted uh, for all uh, European powers. Yes, I believe one of the values that we should all consider is the population of these states. From our studies, it is that they are extremely large, destabilizingly large for smaller nations. The, the issue, again, I want to reiterate, though, is all of those pops are currently being utilized in order to produce cheap goods in the Qing's market of what we all benefit from. A division yes. here would be innately unequal. Germany would likely walk out of this, like many of the great powers, in a very good position. But others, including major powers, would in the long term suffer great economic hardship, as those jobs would be put into the domestic markets of these other European powers and uh, no longer be able to supply cheap goods to the world anymore. Uh, meaning those countries that get the lion's share of this deal would be dramatically in a better place. The Portuguese Empire will also just support partial partition of China. We also want to bring so, up yes. another matter really briefly. I know it's not the direct reason here, but the Ottomans have started yet another war in the Middle East. It was our understanding that the Sing Emirate along with the Sikhs were under the British dominion, and we'd like to question why these lands are being annexed. I mean, the Ottomans have expanded non-stop since the end of World War One, and we do want to bring this up since we do have a Congress here. Yes, uh, we made a deal with them over the thing. What were the terms of this deal exactly? Uh, uninterrupted flow of oil in exchange for it. The problem here is that you are giving away vast regions of territory to a growing power that is quickly becoming uh, dangerous. I didn't know we were talking about Spain here, Germany. I said I said Ottomans, didn't I? It's yes, and I was saying that we can say the same thing about Spain. If this is not an issue for the great powers, that's fine. But do any other great powers have an issue of Britain just like giving pieces of territory continuously away to the Ottomans right now? Uh, the Dutch must say that we support the German position on this. Uh, the Ottoman Empire is currently sitting as the number two worldwide economy. To compare them to the Spanish, who are the number 17th economy, is 
a rather strange um, position. I assume these are going to be integrated states and, and not released at any point. Uh, Ambassador from the Ottoman Empire. We intend to ensure that the uh, Singh Emirates will no longer engage in any form of slave trade, engage in any form of serfdom, and engage in any form of exploitation of their people, uh, mostly Tyrannian people, especially the Persian uh, minority within the nation. That's understood. Uh, you use that justification for all your recent wars, which is valid, but do you plan on releasing it in the future once you've done so? We intend to release the uh, regions of uh, Afghanistan, uh, but we will not be releasing the regions of uh, Khorasan, Sistan, and Tajikistan. The balance of power was already upset with the unification of Germany and the uh, dissolution of the Austrian Empire. We believe that there is already an issue of a balance of power. The French will not support this peti petition as uh, uh, we believe this uh, position is merely an uh, agreement between two great powers. We understand. We, we are fine with them being independent, but we do not wish to see them under direct Ottoman rule. Uh, alternatively, if you do wish to, to, to get rid of this dangerous uh, stuff in their government, as long as you make a promise to release them, we have no issue. Otherwise, we are going to declare for them here. Well, then we believe that you should uh, simply renege your claim upon uh, Japan instead. Very well. The Germans have decided to throw Europe into war. Oh, oh, oh. This is not acceptable. How could this happen? They have decided it, it is to throw going us to the war. point. We, we have watched Ottoman expansion non stop since the end of World War I. Their economy eclipses all but the British. The military grows by the day. This is unacceptable. And we will intervene as needed here. We will not see the Ottomans become what they once were centuries ago. The, the Ottomans are allies of the French, and we are going to defend them uh, uh, with uh, arms. And also, 